Today, I want to talk about how the AMC Endgame is finally here. I want to talk about how the shorts have survived for so long, but how they're about to lose tons of margin collateral that they illegally created for themselves, leading to the AMC Endgame. So stay tuned, and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Nathan tweeted saying, for those wondering why HKD is up today, he said it's an inside job to create liquidity before the 11th of January. Now, obviously, we know these hedge funds and market makers have been using these Chinese IPO stocks to generate hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of liquidity so they can survive those margin calls for a few more days. But this video really digs into just how deep the rabbit hole goes and how much liquidity they've actually created for themselves. So on January the 11th, 16 million HKD shares become available from their lockup period at $7.80. Therefore, tons of hedge funds will be selling off to recognize their profits. Now, this is basically the reverse metrics of a squeeze. Instead of being the first of the door to close out of their short positions, these hedge funds are going to be racing for the door to be the first ones to sell their shares at artificially inflated prices. And throughout this video, you'll really see just how much HKD really is the reverse squeeze play on how these hedge funds have been surviving for so long. And as Nathan said, they had a plan all along. Run it up while the float is thin and then dump on the retail investors when all of their shares unlock. So if we look on the NASDAQ website for AMTD Digital or HKD, we can see there were 16 million shares outstanding and many of those shares had a lockup period of 180 days, expiring on the 11th of January 2023. Therefore, on the 11th of January, many, many hedge funds will be able to sell their HKD shares to unsuspecting retail investors, recognizing their pumped up profits. This is obviously what they've been using to meet their margin calls and to maintain their margin requirements for some time now. But now these shares are actually unlocking so they can physically recognize their cash gains. But to show just how deep the corruption really runs and to show just how much of an anti-squeeze play HKD really was, check out this tweet from Sky Cat. He said the CTB or cost of borrow average according to Ortex was 315%. This obviously makes it very, very expensive for anyone to short the HKD stock, really turning off those short sellers and turning away retail investors from shorting this stock. That way the hedge funds could continue pushing the price up, generating themselves more and more liquidity to avoid those margin calls. But to show just how deep the corruption really runs and how these hedge funds were able to use this one stock as an anti-squeeze play, check out this next line. He said, according to TDA or TD Ameritrade, institutional ownership is at 290.1%. Amy, we're saying, hang on, Tom, 290.1%. That's obviously more than 100% ownership. Surely that's got to be a typo. So let's check out the TD Ameritrade website. Well, here we are on the TD Ameritrade website for AMTD Digital, aka the HKD stock, and we can see the percentage held by institutions is indeed 290.1%. These hedge funds have literally been creating synthetic shares for AMTD Digital, aka HKD, but they haven't been using synthetic shares to short the stock. They've been creating synthetic shares and using them to hold them to generate tons more liquidity. Why just create a company that has a $300 billion market cap and hold 100% of the shares when you can hold 290% of the shares? Why create $300 billion of additional excess liquidity when you can instead create 2.9 times that nearly a trillion dollars of excess liquidity? Why just create synthetic shares to help short a company into bankruptcy when you can create synthetic shares to help inflate the price, generating you even more money? But obviously, as I said, AMTD Digital or HKD really has this expiration date of the 11th of January because that's when tons and tons of hedge funds will be selling off their shares after that lockup period. Also, guys, be sure to sign up to Moomoo using the link in the description below. Moomoo is very easy to use. They do not engage in payment fraud flow. They've got tons of technical indicators and advanced charting tools. And if you sign up to Mimi right now, you can currently get 15 free shares worth up to $2,000 each. And on top of that, Mimi is holding a $60,000 giveaway sweepstake. Now you probably saw yesterday the price of HKD run up from $10 all the way to $20 and then $30. And actually in the pre-market today, it ran above $50. Yes, obviously today the price has been dropping, but don't forget we're not anywhere close to the 11th yet. Therefore, there's still tons more time for these hedge funds to pump up the AMTD digital stock. I imagine these hedge funds are going to use their additionally generated liquidity, all 290% of the float of it, as long as they can until the very last second. 
And I'm sure when these shares in HKD do unlock and the HKD play is over, I'm sure they're going to use some of their other Chinese IPOs like MEGL and ATXG to try and keep that margin train going. But I think the fact that institutions are holding 290% of the float really proves how they were able to keep those margin requirements met, but also how there is a definite expiration date to those margin requirements or to that additional capital that they generated. And on top of that, as Chuck tweeted, he said, when you see that GameStop is down nearly 8% on no news, just remember that HKD can jump 2000% in two days. You may say, Tom, GameStop and AMC surely can't jump 2000% in two days, especially not at the moment. And technically right now as the hedge funds are in control, I would have to agree that right now, AMC and GameStop can't jump 2000% in two days. HKD can because the hedge funds are in control of HKD and that's exactly what the hedge funds want to happen. But I do think that when these hedge funds lose control of AMC and GameStop, that AMC and GameStop could easily run up 2000% each, if not significantly more, in only two days or even less. I think while the hedge funds do have control, yes, we're struggling to grind past four, five, six, ten, twenty dollars in AMC, but as soon as they lose control, it will literally take a matter of seconds, a matter of minutes, or a matter of hours. The squeeze will happen in a flash. And to show how close we are to even more margin calls, I do believe there's a number of other crypto exchanges that are just about to go bankrupt. As Garlam tweeted, he said, breaking news, Huobi shut down internal employee communication groups and feedback channels and fired 20% of their staff. They've basically shut down all employee emails, all employee mobile phones, so none of the employees can contact each other, which just shows how on the last legs Huobi really is. Huobi is clearly having a liquidity crisis or a liquidity event and could end up going bankrupt over the weekend. And again, it's not just Huobi, as crypto lender Genesis also considers bankruptcy and lays off 30% of their staff. Maybe that's a second exchange that will end up going bankrupt over the weekend or at least early next week. And that's going to mean that both the crypto market and likely the stock market as well will open next week very, very red and will likely continue falling even further. Now, as I've said, I do believe that will lead to margin calls and it will lead to many hedge funds going bankrupt and being forced to close out of their positions. And I think this tweet really goes to show that we can actually win when some of these hedge funds end up going bankrupt. Go Telegraph tweeted saying, let me get this straight. The London Metal Exchange is being sued for nearly $500 million after cancelling orders during the nickel mania last year. Why? Because it would have forced a $20 billion margin call. And now metal stockpiles at the LME are at a 25 year low. It really goes to show that actually stock exchanges can be sued in the public eye for nearly $500 million after turning off the buy button or cancelling transaction history. And I also saw one of the most interesting tweets I've ever seen from Adam Aaron that I personally believe has a very hidden meaning. Now, Nick obviously tweeted this video of Elon Musk, Ryan Cohen, and Adam Aaron. Adam Aaron replied saying, thank you, Nick. The creativity in this community continues to astound me. He said, by the way, somebody else tweeted me the observation that AMC, which officially stands for American Multi Cinema, is also short for Aaron, Musk, and Cohen. He said the long odds of that being the case are one in 17,576. Now, A, I don't really know why he said the long odds, why not just say odds, and especially when long means going long or buying actual shares, and why he said one in 17,576. Now, I have no idea where these odds actually come from. If you calculate the odds of three people having these surnames, basically having a surname out of all of the surnames available, the odds are nowhere even close to one in 17,000. If you type into Google like surnames beginning with A, surnames beginning with M, and surnames beginning with C, there's around 200 surnames for each example. Around 200 surnames beginning with A, around 200 beginning with M, and around 200 beginning with C. To be very, very specific, there's slightly less A's with around 150 A's, 200 M's, and 200 C's. Now, if we plug that into a probability calculator, 1 in 200 is a probability of 0.5%. 0.5% of event A, 0.5% of event B, and 0.5% of event C gives you a total probability of 0.0000125%. Now, if you plug in a percentage to fraction conversion, 0.0000125% is around 1 in 10 million. 
So basically the probability of three people having the surnames Aaron, Musk and Cohen is nowhere close to one in 17,000. It's actually around one in 10 million. Even if this calculation is slightly wrong, one in 8 million, one in 5 million, even one in a million is still nowhere close to one in 17,000. So this number 17,576 must stand for something very, very specific. Now, Billy Mack tweeted saying that he believes that it relates to litigation release 17,576. Now that is where Millennium Financial engaged in the fraudulent sale of securities, aka the selling of synthetic shares. Therefore, this could be a suggestion that Adam Aaron believes that synthetic shares do exist, or Adam Aaron believes the price of AMC could go to $17,000 per share. Whatever it is, it's a very, very interesting tweet that Adam Aaron has actually sent that really makes no specific sense in terms of the mathematical sense. On top of that, Adam Aaron tweeted saying, more AMC shares and Ape units vested yesterday for myself, bringing my current ownership after income tax paid to a million AMC shares and 1.3 million Ape units. He said, I am AMC's largest retail shareholder. He said, I will not sell any of these shares anytime soon because I ride with you. Now, I personally think that's very, very encouraging that Adam Aaron is holding over 2.3 million shares at the moment. And after the reverse split, it will be over 230,000 shares. It shows that Adam Aaron is AMC's largest retail investor. And it also shows that Adam Aaron is not selling and he believes the price will go up. And especially when you combine it with this tweet of Adam Aaron actually acknowledging the existence of Adam Aaron, Elon Musk and Ryan Cohen as a potential trio and even gave some weird odds of it actually happening. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.